of Scientific and Industrial Research has released a report detailing the impact of the rolling blackouts this year. And I'm joined now by Monique Leroux, Senior Researcher at the CSIR. Monique, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, I think what the startling thing is that your report finds there was more load shedding in September this year than in the whole of 2020. I mean, that's quite astonishing. Does that mean that 2022 unequivocally is the worst year of load shedding we've ever had? Yes, absolutely, without a doubt. If you look at the statistics, it's quite frightening. Um, compared to 2021, we're already up to September experiencing 228% more load shedding, and compared to 2020, it's 320% more load shedding. So if we um, delve a little deeper into your report, how did you calculate uh, and how did you assess this? Because um, we know that megawatts have to be shared. That's what load shedding is all about. It's taking pressure off the grid, less demand. Uh, but we also know there are other shedding episodes. For example, there's um, load reduction, where areas that have a history of non-payment just get switched off for a few hours. We also have unplanned outages. Did you calculate all those events, or did you simply look at planned load shedding? Okay, so firstly, Sally, the data that we've got, we get directly from ESCOM. This is ESCOM's raw data that comes out. They um, give it to us and we analyze it and we publish it. From the data, we look at all the factors, including manual load shedding, load reduction, demand side management. All of those measures are taken into account, but I can guarantee you that those measures are very small compared to the actual load shedding that's taking place. All right, so load shedding is by far the bulk um, of the megawatts that have to be shed from the grid. That's, that's good perspective. Thank you for that. But you have calculated it all together. The other thing you looked at was energy availability factor, which is something we've become quite uh, au fait with. And that is a, a term that explains how much of the grid is actually available uh, to be used. A few years ago, I think we're up in the 70% around that. We have been seeing a decline. Uh, talk to me about where we are currently and where you expect us to go. Okay, so you're absolutely right. In 2017, which was not that far back, we were looking at the energy availability factor, which means that Eskom's plant at the moment was available for 68% or 86% of the time, um, which was quite high. And then that's been showing a um, decline as the years have um, gone past. We, at the moment, we're sitting at between 60 and 50%, where some weeks we've um, dipped even below 50%, which means Eskom's plant is only available 50% or less of the time which obviously spells trouble for the grid, spells trouble for the country where ESCOM can't supply the demand, can't supply the energy needs of the country with the energy availability factor of 50%. Is your report just a, a crunch of the data or are you also looking at contributing factors? Uh, where are we more vulnerable to load shedding? Are there contributing factors, for example? We look at some contributing factors as well, um, mostly it's crunching the data and then putting it into perspective for people to see. Um, often, we obviously, we all experience load shedding. We feel the crunch of it. Uh, every business, every person in South Africa can say that they've experienced load shedding and that it's got an effect on their lives. But it's quite interesting to see the data in perspective, to see that we've been shed for a total of 1,950 hours in this year alone. Um, but then we also look at contributing factors. We look at our um, Eskom's plant available. We look at the comparison of unplanned versus planned outages and we can see a definite trend between unplanned and planned outages where some years ago it was more um, planned maintenance, planned outages that were taking place where now that's definitely shifted towards unplanned outages and it's becoming increasingly clear that Eskom is finding it difficult to keep their plant online and available to supply electricity. And then we also look at different um, energy sources, whether it's from coal or renewables, um, nuclear, we look at what those contributions are and also how that's trending over time and the availability and the contribution of them towards the general electricity in South, South Africa. So are you able uh, from that data to extrapolate trends? You're saying you're seeing a trend showing uh, that there's more unplanned outages that are causing a loss uh, of megawatts. Are you able to say, look at 2023 and, and make a prediction uh, about what it's likely to be like? I mean, are we heading for worse than ever load shedding, a stable picture similar to this year, or even an improvement? 
That's always the difficult question. No one can say for certain, but if we look at the trends, then yes, definitely we're in for some dark days. And it seems like Eskom is finding it increasingly difficult to raise the energy availability factor. The board has been given a mandate to increase that factor, but everyone sort of agrees that it's going to be quite difficult for them to do that. And unless Eskom starts putting new capacity on the grid, it's load shedding is here to remain. And the predictions are now that it's probably going to be another two to three years of intense load shedding. And then hopefully as the IPP procurement programs um, come online and get grid connected, there'll be some easing of, of the load shedding. Based on the trends, and as you said, it is a, a bit of a moving target, but do you think that we're likely to see more intensive load shedding? You know, I'm talking steady stages three and four, which have a massive knock-on impact on our economy, or hopefully keeping it in the one to two stages? Uh, definitely, if you look at the trends, it's increasing and it's getting worse. If we compare, as you said, just 20, 20 to, um, 2022 to 2021, up to this stage, we've already seen an, a doubling of the load shedding. And in September alone, we've had 570 hours of load shedding. And of that, the bulk was in stage four and stage five, which obviously has a massive detrimental effect on businesses, on individuals, on everyone in the country. And if you look at those trends, it's unfortunately... I'm um, hard to say that that won't continue in the future unless mm. more capacity is brought online. Yeah, and of course, as you said, there's a desperate rush to bring extra capacity online. Some extra alternative energy is already online, uh, wind, solar. How much is that contributing to the grid currently? So we've seen some nice trends with solar and wind um, in the morning peak. There's some contribution from, from solar and wind, which looks like it's around 10%. And then in the evening peak, we get a nice contribution from wind, seeing that those are, um, fall in line with the windy period of the day, which contributes around 16% to the total supply during that time. So there's definitely some... Um, positive news coming from the renewable side in that they're easing some of the load shedding. We definitely would have seen much higher stages and more permanent load shedding if it weren't for the renewables that were online already. We just heard Jan Oberholzer say that they're planning a big maintenance project with Coburg that's starting on December the 8th. Are we going to close out the year on extreme levels of load shedding? What are you seeing for the rest of the year? It's, it definitely seems likely now that the uh, one unit at Kuburg is out. We know that one unit at Kuburg, Kuburg means a definite stage of load shedding, which it's increased. Um, one stage of loading, load shedding being 1,000 megawatts in a unit at um, Kuburg almost being close to 1,000 megawatts. So we definitely have that. And continuing the trends of the year, we obviously have more um, or continued load shedding. It's difficult to say which stage it, it will be in um, September compared to October. We've seen a little bit of an easing. It just depends what happens to Eskom's plant. And then in, into December, we should see some easing as um, industries and businesses close down for the Christmas holidays. But then maybe another bang as we start the new year. Oh, my word. All right. Thank you very much for breaking it down so comprehensively. Much appreciated. Monique LaRue, senior researcher at the CSIR. 1,950 hours of load shedding this year. Astonishing. Still to